even though you may do your best to avoid the darkness of this world, it very often invades your life without your invitation or permission. What I'm trying to say is that each day of your life has the possibility of darkness entering into it without your invitation. When a hunter goes hunting, he does not invite the lion and the bear. But the lion and the bear do not need the hunter's invitation or permission to make their appearance. I want to give you an example of this principle from modern day life. There is a man called Lydell Grant. He's still alive today. He was arrested in America for a murder he did not commit a fatal and a brutal stabbing. And he was charged and put on trial and at his hearing six witnesses testified with absolute certainty that he was the murderer. He was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment and he spent five years there before he was released due to DNA evidence. The real murderer was arrested and convicted. But this man, Lydell Grant, was just minding his own business, doing nothing wrong, when along came the darkness and swept him into prison for life, stole his dignity, stole his hope, stole his future. And you would think that he would be bitter, angry at God at least. But this is not so. What amazes me is that when he has the opportunity, Lydell testifies to the light, not to the darkness. This is what he said to the media when he was released. This is a huge day for me. I thank God. I always got to put God first because it was Him who I had when I didn't have anyone else. I was actually innocent. I didn't commit this crime. At another point he says, This is something that was meant to happen for me in my life. To get to where God wanted me to be in life, to receive the blessings, to have him. See, Rydell, when I listen to him, raises this question in me. Would you and I respond the same? Would we say, yes, into darkness we went, but more so into light? Would we see God as sovereign even over the darkest moments of our life? Would we have retained or found our faith in the midst of the uninvited darkness? Now at this point of reflection, I want us to consider Joseph from our text. He is 17 years old and his life is about to be flooded with darkness. And as you read the story in Genesis chapter 37, you can see things are going seriously south early on. The young man Joseph is a shepherd, but the Hebrew alludes to him as shepherding all his not-so-friendly brothers. He brings a bad report of them to Jacob, their father. He's, he's really a bit irritating. He's a 17-year-old telltale. There's a lot of pride there. And to add insult to injury, Joseph's father Jacob makes for him a multicolored robe, making it clear as daylight to all those who can see that he loves Joseph more than he loves any one of the other brothers. But just remember, Joseph did not ask for this robe and, and Jacob should have known better being the adult. Because jealousy is a very, very, very strong emotion and this is what is being awakened in the brothers. And the nail in the coffin is when Joseph somewhat naively shares his dream or dreams with his brothers where they bow down before him. And I can understand the brothers' jealousy and their anger and they plot to kill Joseph. They take hold of him when they have opportunity and strip him of his multicolored robe. They throw him into a pit. Eventually he is sold off to Midianite traders who sell him in turn as a slave in Potiphar's house in Egypt. Then they do this dastardly thing. They dip his multicolor coat in goat's blood and tell his father that a fierce animal had killed Joseph. They break Jacob's heart. 
No one deserved this. Joseph did not deserve this, even though he was an irritating 17-year-old telltale. Yet darkness flooded his life without permission and without warning. And one day he was the favorite son of Jacob. The next day he was the dead son of Jacob, a slave in Egypt. And let me tell you, it was pure hell. You cannot see it directly from our text, but Psalm 105 gives us a window in. It says this, They bruised his, that's Joseph's, feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. Till what he foretold came to pass, that's the dreams. Till the word of the Lord proved true in him. You see, there was a process a breaking down, I think, and believe of the pride in him and that which was not good until the day arrived when, in fact, his brothers did bow down before him and the words of the Lord in the dream became true. You see, the lion and the bear and the darkness may enter in our lives at any stage without invitation or permission. You do not know what tomorrow holds, yet the greater purposes of God often play out most clearly in the places where we experience our darkest moments. It is in the darkest moments in Christ's life that God's purpose for your salvation plays out. Men commit the sin of murdering Him and inadvertently fulfill God's purposes. Because God was sovereign over Christ's darkest moments, sovereign over the humiliation, the blood and the suffering. It wasn't darkness that was sovereign, it was God. And there is a promotion that flows from the darkness into the light. You see, Jesus moved from death to life. Jesus moved from despised and murdered Son of God to the glorious ruling Son of God, seated at His right hand. It is Joseph's darkest moments that lead him to Egypt so that he eventually becomes second in charge and so that he can fulfill God's purposes for the salvation of his family. Because God was sovereign over Joseph's darkest moments, his rejection, his isolation, his pain, not the darkness. The darkness is never sovereign over your darkest moments. And in Joseph's life, God's greater good purposes played out whether Joseph understood it at the time or not. And Joseph, here's the key, kept the faith. He continued to believe. He continued to be obedient. He never stopped. And so we read this in Genesis chapter 39. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. And when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Do you see the prospering on Joseph in the midst of the darkness? And do you see that even an unbelieving Potiphar is blessed by it? Further on we read, but while Joseph was there in prison, remember in the meantime he gets in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in, his, in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Do you see it? Prosperity and promotion for the people of faith even in the darkness, building up the light, building up the light, not stopping even for the darkness. And then the pinnacle of light, as a wise man said to me yesterday, one morning Joseph woke up in a prison, the next evening he slept in a palace. Into darkness, into light. This is the pattern for those of faith. As Lydell Grant said, this is something that was meant to happen for me in my life to get to where God wanted me to be in life, to receive the blessings, to have him. Because just like with Joseph, God was sovereign over Lydell Grant's darkest moments in that prison cell, not the darkness. And God's greater good purposes played out whether Lydell Grant understood it or not at the time, into darkness, into light.
prosperity and promotion, even when the lights are out, for those who are of the faith, those with whom God moves. I close. You do not know what tomorrow holds, because the lion and the bear and the darkness do not need your invitation. And life on earth is in no way so secure that you can bank on it with any certainty. That is why Jesus' brother, the Apostle James, says this to us. Come now you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. For you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. You see, it is God, not you, nor I, nor the lion, nor the bear, nor the darkness, who holds the outcome of our future. God holds the outcome of our future. Will you trust Him with your future? Whatever it may hold, Will you keep the faith in him even when the lion and the bear and the darkness come upon you? Will you keep the faith from painful shackle into that God-glorifying, God-purpose-fulfilling moment of overcoming? Will you keep the faith? Will you be able to say, yes, I went into darkness, yet into light? May God bless you so. Amen.